What's up YouTube, I'm Jay and welcome to channel L214. Today we're going to be looking at cold versus hot water therapy for recovery, which temperature therapy to be used for which circumstances or exercise types with scientific results. I hope today's video can help you in better recovery after a good workout regardless of your style of training. And before I start, please note that the cold water mentioned in this video is in ice therapy or cryotherapy. The cold mentioned is a temperature at around 5 to 15 degrees Celsius or 41 to 59 degrees Fahrenheit. Now with that out of the way, let's get started. It has been reported that the outer and intramuscular temperature play a huge role in muscle recovery, but there have been conflicting studies showing that cold water therapy is better, and some studies say that hot water therapy is better for recovery. So where do we go from here? A 2017 study from Journal of Physiology reported that in terms of muscle fatigue recovery from endurance exercise, glycogen resynthesis rate was damaged when muscle temperature is cold and was improved when hot. The study concluded that muscle glycogen resynthesis rate was found to be faster at 36 degrees Celsius than at 26 degrees, resulting faster recovery when the surrounding temperature is higher. And in another study from the same journal in 2018, a British researchers also explained that higher intramuscular temperature increases the rate of glycogen resynthesis, improves muscle functions, thus partially justifying hot water or sauna therapy to be helpful for post-workout recovery. As for cold water therapy, it's easier to find studies involving longer duration sports such as football, basketball, rugby, and such. A 2014 study from Journal of Sports Science and Medicine stated that well-trained college rugby players that underwent cold water therapy showed no significant effects on post-game muscle damage recovery. In another study from Frontiers in Sports and Active Living Journal, a study on national level volleyball players showed that cold water therapy did not appear to have any short-term benefit for acute recovery during training season, but did benefit other professional players when therapy was used for longer than 16 consecutive days. And lastly, a study from Temperature Journal stated that 10 to 15 minutes of cold water immersion therapy may benefit sports performance. However, it also said that cold water immersion is not recommended to be followed immediately after training with weights. Now, seeing how my channel is mainly about fitness and bodybuilding, I've tried to look up direct correlation for bath at different temperatures and muscular hypertrophy. As for hot water therapy, a 2015 study by joint researchers from Australia, New Zealand, Norway, Denmark, and the US reported that resistance training topped with cold water therapy can result in weakening of muscle hypertrophy or disruption in muscle building process. And another study published in 2021 in Journal of Exercise Science and Fitness, speed skaters were prescribed to a hot jacuzzi for 20 minutes at 40 degrees Celsius for four weeks after training. Researchers have reported that hot bath therapy showed additional benefits to maximum isometric strength without compromising athletic performance in speed skaters. As for cold water therapy, there have been reports that regular post-workout cooling and lowering muscle temperature may weaken muscle hypertrophy. In a 2020 study, Dutch researchers reported that cold water immersion during recovery after resistance training lowers the rate of muscle protein synthesis and recommended that individuals whose goals are to improve muscular conditions may need to reconsider the use of cold water immersion as a recovery strategy after training. Another similar model study from Journal of Applied Physiology also came to similar conclusions. One of the popular bodybuilding myths and hypotheses is that hot water bath may increase the rate of protein synthesis and thus can aid in hypertrophy. Unfortunately, scientific studies have reported that there is no apparent correlation between the two. And although hot bath does not increase the rate of protein synthesis, it may contribute uh, to some extent to our glycogen resynthesis process and cold intramuscular temperature does not. But it is a fact that some of the past studies have reported that cold water immersion can enhance AMPK and mitochondrial biosynthesis. It is true that there are advantages, but it's probably necessary for us to distinguish 
for what goals we want to take a cold or a hot bath for specific training style and objectives. To summarize today's research paper's points and conclusions, studies have shown that cold water therapy does not increase glycogen resynthesis and may slow muscle protein synthesis rate and potentially expected hypertrophy, but have been shown to have an advantage in muscle damage recovery after sporting event. And same as cold, hot water therapy does not directly increase muscle protein synthesis rate despite popular rumors and hypothesis, but higher surrounding and intramuscular temperature can aid in glycogen resynthesis. So for this fact, I think those who participate in endurance-based sports can definitely benefit from hot water therapy after training. Physiologically, cold water immersion can help us alleviate pain, reduce inflammation and swelling through constricting blood vessels, and reduce cortisol levels. So if your goal is to receive these benefits, cold water therapy can definitely help you, whereas Hot water immersion can help us in blood flow circulation, flushing out waste products from weight training, cardiovascular health, reduce soreness, and help us sleep better. So if your interests lie in this category, hot bath might be better for you. Sadly, I wasn't able to find a direct correlation for which temperature bath is better suited for muscle hypertrophy. Both cold and hot water therapy still lack research on direct hypertrophic related elements, but they can both help us in weight training with physiological benefits mentioned earlier, which can possibly help us to put on more muscles by uh, being able to train better and stronger. That's a wrap for today, guys. Please subscribe and hit the like button if the video helped. Always make gains. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.